All right, Monroe, let's take a look at your paper MLA format first. This looks good. This looks good. The Great Divide. I like that title. Um, and I think it works well with what you're going for. Although maybe some hints of it in your, a little bit more of that in your, your introduction might draw the title a little bit more into your paper. Okay. So, ambition makes a man, morality defines him. The absence of either one can be very grim. I like this first sentence. I think it's really good. I almost feel like you stole it from somewhere, but you're smart enough that you probably wrote it yourself, which is awesome. Uh, except this. Ugh. You cannot use very or really in your papers ever again, Monroe. Okay? No very, no really. Get rid of them. Uh, come up with better language. So, Macbeth and his namesake play, you have to mention the author as well. You don't mention Shakespeare at all in here. Uh, so, make sure that you mention that. Uh, Here's one thing, speaking of word choice, morality, ambition, okay? So let's count them up. You use morality at least three times, um, four times. You use ambition, I believe, four times. And the worst part is, is you use them in almost every single sentence. So actually, I think you use it in every single sentence. One, two, three, four, Five. So you use both words five times and in every single sentence. You have got to find a different way to talk about your theme um, instead of repeating that over and over and over again. So you got to find, you got to do something different, Monroe. Um, and, and maybe again, it's not just using a different word for ambition, but, um, you know, men will do whatever it takes in order to blah, 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 something like that. I mean, that's ambition. You're just not saying it over again. So the the other part of this is I do like some of your wording. Um, I mean, I think you have some good wording and some, some, some good ideas in here. Uh, I'd love to see a little bit better preview of what's coming up in the paper, what you're going to talk about, etc. You do have a double period problem here. I'm not exactly sure what happened there, but you do have some, some punctuation problems there. Your thesis... Uh, almost acts like more along the lines of your introduction of your topic in your thesis you never want to say one of the most profound themes in the play um, because you should have already covered this by now that should be your topic that this is a theme in the play that we're going to talk about so one of the themes is the moral confliction with the corrupting powers of unchecked ambition now I like that phrase and I think that should be part of your thesis that causes the needless bloodshed and abandonment of morality. So I know you're going to be playing off the idea of ambition versus morality. Um, but I'm not sure that you've got to the point of analysis. Because I think what's going to happen is you're just going to say, because you're conflicted, people kill each other. Uh, and they don't do what they should do. And I think that's probably going to get repetitive after a while. So we'll see how it works. But I think that thesis needs to be cleaned up a little bit still. All right, Monroe, uh, topic sentence could be stronger. Uh, not He wasn't always corrupted. Like, give me a, give me a, a better analysis of that concept that um, although he was a victim of his ambition, um, it was this, that, I don't know, something like that that would make it a little bit stronger there. Uh, so you do some uh, good building of his character in here uh, and what's going on. This is a good place. He had done so much, there's no repayment with the weight. That would have been a good embedded quote there that you could have used as well. Um, you know, we got very in there again, so I want to try to eliminate that. When you do dive into your the mean part, though, um, it's really good. Uh, I think this part is really good. Uh, I, I see you trying to build your case for him uh, in here, which you did it a little bit differently than everyone else did it, which is fine. Um, I think there are several different ways to tackle these topics, but um, I like that you build in here. I love the idea of uh, the friction point in his growing ambition, uh, his polar change in morality, symbolizes the eroding power of unchecked ambition. But again, how many times are we using the word ambition and moral uh, all throughout this? Just be careful how you do that. Okay, a couple comma things. Uh, punctuation. No comma there, no comma there. This is all one thought, all one sentence. You don't need to break it apart. Same thing goes uh, with this one, too. His change of morality layer in the place symbolizes the you don't need one there, okay? Um, so you can get rid of that. The question becomes, so you're going to introduce a, a question here. Uh, this would probably be a, a colon in that case, since you're introducing this long whatever. And if this is a question, how come that's not a question mark? 
So make sure you fix those things in there um, and that uh, that you know that. But not bad for building this paragraph. I think this is a really good building of the paragraph, which I don't know if you do as well in the next one. I think this next paragraph, as we get into it, you uh, meander a little bit more in and out of, of what you need to be doing. But let's take a look at it and see how it works. All right, before we get into this, make sure you have a strong transitional statement from from this one to the next one. Uh, this topic sentence also is weak. Uh, I, I feel like you could definitely make that stronger for what you're going to do in this paper. All right. Uh, let's see. Let's tackle punctuation uh, first. There's a couple different places that we would need to do something differently. Uh, when you have embedded quotes like this, you don't need the uh, comma there, so you can get rid of those commas. Uh, and then this comma would go right there. Now then read this. But Macbeth in his Act 1 soliloquy realizes, so you don't need this or this there um, at all. Um, but then that comma would go right there. That's what you'd use it there. Uh, we would you use it for. There's another, you know, oddly worded, not simply will Macbeth act upon his own bridal ambition. Macbeth will not simply act upon his own unbridled ambition uh, of disloyalty, but... So here's two complete sentences. So you need a comma there, comma conjunction. You have two complete thoughts on either side. Uh, so a couple different ways, in a couple different areas that you need to, to work on that. You have a space issue here that you need to work on. Um, anyways, your use of embedded quotes is really good. I like the ones that you bring up, and I feel like you take a second to talk about each one and in, in its. Um, um, significance to your argument so I, I really like that and I think I may have misspoke a little bit earlier when I said this one's a little bit all over the place this one actually is a lot stronger um, overall uh, I, I must have been looking at something a little bit different but I, I really feel like this is mostly a mean paragraph you're using embedded quotes but ultimately you really are diving into a lot of analysis in here um, I like the cracking of the floodgates. Um, he concludes this must be a direct consequence of self-realized ambitions. I like that. You got a space issue there too. Monroe, you got too many spaces. Um, this is not the strongest last sentence here. Um, you know, because of whatever for his actions later. I mean, you could really tie that. This needs to be a stronger transition to tie into this next um, this next paragraph. So, uh, I really do like this paragraph. Um, strike anything I said previous to me reading this paragraph. Um, I, I really do like it. Monroe It uh, really does a really good job. Uh, see, I'm using really. I yell at you for using really, and now I'm using really all the time. It does a good job uh, of, of analyzing in there. So good job in that, on that paragraph. All right, so this, here, here's my problem with this as a topic sentence, at least at the, what seems to be your topic sentence. Um, by the conclusion of Act 1, this makes me think that you're only going to focus on Act 1, yet you use a, a line from Act 3. Um, so and I think I'd make this first sentence a little bit more encompassing of what you're going to talk about, because it's more than just the end of Act 1. Um, it's, it's much deeper than it. Um, and you talk about Lady Macbeth, uh, but briefly, uh, which... Uh, I was surprised. I thought maybe you would talk more about her and, and her corrupting of his morals. But there's really only two sentences here. You could almost take that, you know, I, w I would almost take that out. It not, that's not really building your argument. Um, it's not showing us anything that you're not already going to prove. Uh, I mean, I again, I could, you could take this whole section out, start with this, and I think you'd probably be fine. Um because you are talking about the, the Act 1 here at this point. After Macbeth's drastic change in character that defines him as a tragic hero, comma. So no comma here. Characters of guilt still shine through. Um, yet in this actualized guilt, comma, Macbeth does not seek a path of repentance. No comma. Remember, only comma conjunction. We have two complete sentences. But instead decides to wait further into ambition. All right. Then you get this. And then you talk about killing Banquo. So I almost feel like you're backtracking a little bit, but we'll see how that works later. Um, this is not necessarily an embedded quote, although I, I'm okay with you using it this way. Um, and almost you could almost use it differently if you wanted to make um, 
you know, you could almost say that Macbeth um, is not interested in waiting anymore. You know, you use some of the, the aspects of this quote, maybe if you wanted to make it more embedded like. Um, So then you go back to the end here, Macbeth, even by the end of Act 1, compromises morality for unchecked ambition. So, again, I'm having a little problem, Monroe, that you, you talk about Act 1 at the beginning, finish by talking about it by the end of Act 1, but yet you jump way ahead into Act 4, um, and even the guilt of seeing the blood on his hands, which is Act 2. So, I, I mean, I think this paragraph is making a good point, um, and what happens when you have unchecked ambition, but I don't like all the... I don't like all the emphasis on the end of Act 1 in here. Um, there is some good good analysis in here. I feel like there's too much plot almost. I feel like you just need to get to the point like, you know, all right, here's what happens, here's what it means, and just get to the point a little bit faster. Make sure in your uh, conclusion, also in your uh, introduction, your thesis statement is going to get underlined. Uh, that's for your own good, just so you guys know where that where that's at. So make sure you underline that thesis statement here too. All right, so restate of your thesis statement. Again, make sure it's underlined. I'd love to see maybe a little bit stronger restatement of your main points as well, uh, just to drive home that point. Um, we're using, again, moral and ambition and uh, a lot. Morality, I mean moral, morality, uh, moral 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 so i mean we just got to work on word choice here and, and and saying things a little bit differently this is a pretty weak last statement um doesn't really add anything try to bookend it with the the end or the beginning part something along those lines monroe uh we're excited page is fine so lots of good things monroe but man we really gotta we gotta really gotta work on word choice really gotta work on on some punctuation stuff Really got to work on maybe organizing that say show mean pattern a little bit stronger structurally, uh, but you definitely have a lot of good stuff, a lot of good analysis that some of your uh, group mates and, and peers didn't. So you're on the right track that way. So hopefully we'll see a rewrite out of you and we'll clean all this up.